नमस्ते स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आर एस वी ग्रुप ऑफ स्कूल्स यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज माई पार्ट थर्ड ऑफ चैप्टर टेन लाइट रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्रैक्शन फ्रॉम क्लास टेन साइंस इन प्रीवियस टू पार्ट यू मस्ट हैव लर्न अबाउट द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ लाइट रिफ्लैक्शन इट्स डेफिनेशन टाइप्स एंड लॉज इन द सेम कंटेक्सट मूविंग फर्दर नाउ इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो आई विल टॉक अबाउट मिरर्स इमेजेस एंड दे आर टाइप्स इन डिटेल so first of all let's talk about what is an image the likeness of our self that we see in a highly polished shiny surfaces like mirrors or any metallic object is called an image you must have seen your image in the dressing table mirror that is used for personal grooming so that likeness of our self that we see is called image in terms of physics image means optical appearance of an object what are the types of images there are two types of images real image and virtual image now what are the differences between these two types of images real image is formed when the light rays after reflection actually meet at a point while virtual image is formed when the light rays after reflection do not actually meet but appears to meet at a point second point of difference is this that real image is always formed in front of the mirror while virtual image is formed behind the mirror third point of difference is this that real image is always inverted while virtual image is erect so these are the differences between real and virtual image now where do we see the real image the real image is seen in case of concave mirror in the next video i will show you that how real image is formed and virtual image can be seen in dressing table mirror that is used for personal grooming the erect image that we can see is the virtual image because real image is always inverted real and inverted image is also formed in the retina of our eyes now what is mirror actually a mirror is a glass which may be flat or curved whose one side is silvered or polished as you can see here this is a flat glass sheet and these are curved surfaces and their one side is polished or silvered means there is a coat of silver on one side of glass sheet and then it acts like a mirror and what is the role of mirror to reflect the light and what type of reflection does a mirror give regular reflection that we have studied in the previous part and due to regular reflection of light we can see our image in the mirror because only regular reflection can produce the image of the object diffuse reflection cannot produce image so what is a mirror mirror is a glass that may be flat or curved whose one side is silvered or polished now what are the types of mirrors there are two types of mirrors plane and spherical mirrors spherical mirrors are further classified into concave and convex what is plane mirror plane mirror is a flat glass sheet whose one side is silvered or polished and you must have seen the plane mirror in dressing table that is used for personal grooming now what are the characteristics of images formed by plane mirror what type of images are produced by a plane mirror plane mirror always produce virtual image which is erect and the image is formed behind the mirror yes as real image is formed in front of the mirror virtual image is always formed behind the mirror so the image that we see in the dressing table mirror is forming behind the mirror not in front of it and that type of image can also not be obtained on a screen real image can be obtained on a screen for example if we use cinema projector the image can be focused on a wall or on a screen but virtual image which we see in dressing table mirror cannot be obtained on a screen this is also the important point of difference real image can be obtained on a screen because it is forming due to actual intersection of light rays but virtual image can not be obtained on a screen and what type of image is formed by plane mirror virtual which is always erect it is formed behind the mirror and some other characteristics are there the image formed by plane mirror is always of same size as that of the object and is always at the same distance means if you are standing in front of 
प्लेन मिरर एट अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ 10 सेंटीमीटर सो योर इमेज वुड ऑल्सो बी 10 सेंटीमीटर अवे फ्रॉम द मिरर मीन्स द डिस्टेंस ऑफ इमेज एंड द डिस्टेंस ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम द प्लेन मिरर इज ऑलवेज इक्वल एंड द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इज लेटरल इन्वर्जन द इमेज फॉन्ड बाय प्लेन मिरर इज लेटरली इन्वर्टेड लेटरली इन्वर्टेड मीन्स द लेफ्ट पार्ट बिकम द राइट एंड द राइट बिकम द लेफ्ट वेन यू स्टैंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ द मिरर If you raise your left hand, then your mirror will raise right hand. This is called lateral inversion. Left become right, right becomes the left of the image. What is the importance of lateral inversion? You must have seen the word ambulance, which is printed in front of the ambulance van. So, what is the importance of this lateral inversion? That ambulance word is printed in its laterally inverted image, so that driver moving ahead can see its image. in his rear view mirror and leave the way for the ambulance this is the importance of lateral inversion so this was all about the plane mirror now we talk about spherical mirrors in detail spherical mirrors are the part of hollow spheres spherical mirrors are the part of hollow spheres whose one side is silvered or polished now on the basis of which side is silvered or polished we have divided them into two categories concave mirror and convex mirror so what is a concave mirror concave mirror is a part of hollow sphere i have shown this sphere by using dotted line so this is the part of a hollow sphere whose outer side is silvered or polished and the reflecting surface is curved inwards so this type of mirror is concave mirror whose outer side is silvered or polished and inner side is reflecting and other type of spherical mirror you can see there whose inner surface or curved surface is silvered or polished and outer bulge surface is reflecting so this is the difference in the concave or convex mirror its reflecting surface is depressed inside its reflecting surface is projected outward this is concave that is convex mirror concave mirror is also called converging mirror because when light strikes the concave mirror the light rays meet at a point and convex mirror is also called diverging mirror because when light strikes this mirror it gets spreaded out in different direction it gets diverged now we have to understand some of the terms related to these mirrors so let's start with these terms this m m dash is the part of the hollow sphere whose outer surface is polished so we are calling it concave mirror now the center of the hollow sphere of which this mirror is a part the center of the hollow sphere of which this mirror is a part is called center of curvature the meaning of curvature means curved so the center is called center of curvature the midpoint of the reflecting surface of spherical mirror this midpoint of the reflecting surface of spherical mirror this is the reflecting surface and the midpoint of the reflecting surface of spherical mirror is called pole the line joining pole and center of curvature the line joining pole and center of curvature is called radius of curvature it is called radius of curvature and there is a point between c and p and this point is called principal focus represented by letter capital f this is principal focus this principal focus is the point where the light rays after reflection from a concave mirror actually meet so this is the focus point where the light rays after reflection from a concave mirror actually meet this is real principal focus now the distance of this principal focus from the pole of this spherical mirror is called focal length this is called focal length now you can see in the diagram that what is the relationship between this r and this f so this r and f are related in that way f is equal to r by 2 now remember this thing that principal focus is represented by letter capital f while focal length is represented by letter small f and what is the relationship focal length is half of the radius of curvature this is radius and focal length is half because principal focus this point is located exactly in the center of c center of curvature and pole now the line that imaginary line that you can see x x dash that passes from the pole and center of curvature of a spherical mirror and is extended on either side this line is called principal axis the same terminology is used in convex mirror as well but what is the basic difference that in convex mirror the principal focus center of curvature radius 
focal length these all are located on the other side that is on the polished side sil silvered side where light cannot pass really so the focus the principal focus of convex mirror is virtual focus virtual focus means it is not the focus point where the light rays can actually meet because light rays reflect from this part of the mirror and cannot extend on the other side it cannot go towards the other side because the other side is polished so light rays cannot meet actually at this point of convex mirror so it is called virtual focus but this focus of uh, concave mirror is called real focus where the light rays actually meet and this mirror is called converging because the light rays after reflection meet at a point and this mirror is called diverging because the light rays after reflection is spread in different directions so in this way in this video we have learnt about the two types of spherical mirrors once again let's take a quick recap the center of the hollow sphere of which mirror is a part is called center of curvature the midpoint of reflecting surface is called pole the line joining p to c is called radius of curvature between p and c there is a point called principal focus the distance of principal focus from the pole is called focal length focal length is half of the radius of curvature the line joining p to c and is extended on either side is called principal axis you must remember all these terms because in the next video i'll tell you how we can draw the ray diagrams with the help of these mirrors that's all about this video thank you